The Chinese hid in fear as the Japanese army began its assault on the capital. No one really anticipated the scale of violence the Japanese army would cause. In a matter of two months, the Japanese managed to kill 295,525 Chinese civilians, 5,910 of which were innocent little children. 76% were men, 26% were women, and 2% were children. The sad thing is, most of the children were unaccounted for, thrown away, or murdered. The Chinese were completely unprepared for this brutal assault. In 1937, during World War II, the Japanese violated these human rights during their occupation of China. The Japanese used torture methods such as biological experimentation, rape, and mutilation. The Japanese occupation of China resulted in a deep-seated resentment between these two cultures for generations to come. When the Japanese forces arrived in Shanghai, they realized they could not bear to conquer Shanghai because of the Allied forces stationed there. After finding out they could not conquer Shanghai, the Japanese forces settled in Nanking. Once the Japanese settled in Nanking, they began to perform procedures like biological experimentation and human testing. The Japanese had no concern for the suffering or pain of the Chinese. The Japanese realized that Nanking, not having allied forces, would be easier to conquer. Japan invaded China on September 18, 1933. Although they invaded in 1931, stripping the basic human rights from the Chinese for a period of two months starting in December 1937 to February 1938. Japan and China were not at a state of war until July 7, 1937. While Japan and China were waging war, a unit was made. This unit was called Unit 731. Unit 731 was founded in 1933 and remained in China until 1945. It was founded by a man named Shiro Ishii, a Japanese general at the time. Unit 731 had buildings in several key locations, such as Pingfang, Manchuria. The building was being built in Manchuria was named Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of the Kwantung Army. Unit 731 was split into eight key divisions. These divisions were Bacteriological Research, warfare research and field experiments, water filter production, bacteria mass production and storage, educational division, supply division, general affairs, and clinical diagnosis. This secret unit would become hell for the Chinese people faced by the Japanese playing God experimenting on the Chinese people, stripping them of any humanity, dignity, and rights. Shiro Ishii had his scientists perform experiments such as vivisections without anesthesia, having the Chinese right foot removed and replaced with their left, and having limbs amputated to further study blood loss. While you may think these are cruel experiments, compared to others, they are child's play. The more brutal experiments ranged from biological experimentation to genocide. Dr. Sui Akimoto, a young serologist, recalled arriving and he states, I was very shocked when I found out about the human experimentation. Akimoto claimed 
that the scientists had no conscience at all. Most of the scientists were not even sentenced to death. The Japanese would use a term loosely translating to log in English. Log. Because you can carve a log, you can burn a log, and you can bury a log without feeling bad about it. Dr. Akimoto recalls the scientist treating their prisoners like animals. Dr. Akimoto was appalled by the Japanese scientist's actions. The Chinese were lacking human rights. This is shown in the Japanese scientist's actions and behavior towards the Chinese prisoners. Dr. Akimoto also recalls hearing the Japanese scientists saying that their prisoner's death might be considered honorable if in the process they help further the progress of medical science. Unit 731's biological experimentation would range anywhere from experiments with anthrax to sea salt as saline. The Japanese would often inject the Chinese with anthrax, antifreeze, and viruses. The brutality of this biological experimentation resulted in a major violation of human rights. Imagine your body being injected with anthrax, a deadly and painful disease. When anthrax is injected to the body, a blackening of the skin starts to happen around the injection site. Another type of torture the Japanese used would be human testing. Human testing ranges from explosive effectiveness at various distances to body parts being swapped around. The most extreme violation of the Chinese human rights was using napalm on the Chinese. Napalm is a type of chemical that constantly burns until it is suffocated. The Japanese use napalm on groups of Chinese people. The Japanese would even put the Chinese in pressure chambers to see what happens to the body when you pressurize it. The Japanese would often cover the Chinese body up in warm clothes, except for single portions of the body and then put them in cold environments and douse them with ice water to see what happens if only a single part of the human body was exposed to extreme cold. After freezing the Chinese, the Japanese would vivisect the frostbitten parts of the body to see the effects. The lack of human rights the Chinese faced during Japan's occupation of China is horrifying. Our last atrocious war crime the Japanese committed was genocide. Genocide included mass burial of the Chinese, burning the Chinese in huge ovens, and beheadings. The Japanese would use methods such as live beheadings to strike fear into the general population of the Chinese. The Japanese would gather groups of Chinese and make them get into ovens to be burned to death. The Japanese would also gather Chinese men and out them in a mass grave. This mass grave would suffocate the Chinese as they were laying under the dirt, more than an emotional resentment towards the Chinese. Genocide was just one of the ways the Japanese violated the Chinese human rights. After the Japanese committed these horrible war crimes, most of them were let free with little punishment if they told U.S. General MacArthur about the experiments performed. While some may have been killed because of their atrocious war crimes, many walked away free. It is important to make sure that a major violation of human rights does not happen again. And if it does, we shall not let the atrocious war crimes go unnoticed. As a population, it is important to not wage war for the sake of general hatred. <laughs>